Adam, you didn't go the Olympic route like Karras and Lauren did. You were a multi-winning amateur, obviously, at the junior level. Um, you are young. Do you believe that you can now still... Congratulations, to the win the Olympic medal. Um, and uh, I was on the route to become the world champion. That's my goal. I know you look up to.
Yeah. Okay, this will be live. Yeah. yeah. Matt, this will be live. Good afternoon and welcome to what was a very sunny Coventry. It's just started to rain because we've come on air. If you wanted it to rain, you would start a live stream. So apologies to everybody that came out in the shorts. Not an idiot like me who's obviously dressed appropriately. As you can see, I'm going to spin you straight around. We are already underway here. Some fighters have already worked out. But Adam Azim, who is topping this boxer breakthrough series, is just going through his open workout. You can see that Shane McGuigan is just making his way into the ring. And we've got very high hopes for Adam Azim, as has boxer and so many people in the industry at the moment. He's 4-0, and this is a big step up. First time over 10 rounds against a very capable Belgian in Anthony Loffet. Nine fights, eight of those are victories. I'm just going to uh, spin you round where we will find our first guest of today, Matthew Macklin. Pretty local for you, uh, not far to come. Didn't bring the sunshine with you though, uh, so you've got to be blamed for something. But Adam Azim, are we all getting overhyped? Are we moving him too quickly? Am I getting overexcited? Bring him down to earth. Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I think... Um... You can only you can only say what you see, and so far he's he's really produced the goods. Yeah, it's against the level of opposition, which is a far cry from where we believe he's going to be eventually. And we can't, you know, he's not an Olympic gold medalist, but he was a multinational champion, won everything as as a junior, uh, turned pro young, um, has mixed in some serious company in the gym, and people who whose opinions, you know, we all respect and value, talk really highly of him. So you factor that all in, and you watch him fight, and so far. He's looked really good, you know. Yeah, like I say, these guys, we know he should look good against, but he has looked good against them. He's looked really good. He ticked that box. That's yes. what that, that was the whole point of it. What is it that stands out for you, um, for him? Having watched him at ringside, the hand speed is something we haven't seen since the likes of Amir Khan, who's going to be part of our team this week. He has got incredibly fast hands, but there seems to be power in those hands as well. Yeah, definitely speed. That, that's, the, I think, the standout uh, feature straight away is the speed. But the spite in there as well. He's, you know, some people are quick, but they don't. They've got no bite in their shots. You can see he's a spiteful puncher. He, he's hurt, hurtful, uh, accurate, uh, and, and decent variety as well. You know, he, he doesn't economical, doesn't waste, doesn't hit arms and gloves. He's looking, he's looking for the openings. He's looking to try and pry open the defences. He uses the feints, and he's got that little bit of swagger as well, which is uh, always good to see. Well, you can hear probably in your ears that he's just started to hit some pads. So let's spin you round. And let's show you exactly what Matt's talking about. This gym's on a good run as well. I wonder how important, when you were part of the Phoenix camp and um, Billy Graham and success breeds success, it's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? But they're on a good run. Daniel Dubois going over to Don King's America and beating uh, Trevor Bryant, Chris Billum Smith, Anthony Fowler. I'm going to upset someone because I'm going to miss somebody out. But they are all bringing each other on. Yeah, and it, yeah, it is a cliche, 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 success breeds success. But, you know, the cliches become cliches for a reason don't they you know they're, they're a lot quite often true and uh he's, he's in a gym and you know when you're in a gym and everyone's winning everyone's training hard you you're pushing each other run and you also want to be the one to steal the show you it's almost like one upmanship you want to be the the top dog in the gym and uh you know also with Shane McGuigan I don't think he, he's busy enough I don't think he's going to waste his time with someone unless he believes in their ability and where they can go so the fact that he's talking so highly of him as well uh, that makes me, you know, take note. Caroline Dubois was obviously the name that I missed off that list, so I don't want to fall out with Caroline, uh, probably the biggest puncher of the lot. <laughs> Guiding a fighter, there's a lovely promo going out at the moment, voiced by Adam Smith, about timing of a fighter and bringing them along. And you have managed fighters. It's early in Adam Azim's career to step up to 10 rounds. There's no guarantee that on Saturday he'll have to go 10 rounds, but that is a sign of how highly they rate him. If he has to go 10 rounds, he will surely know that he's got 10 rounds in the bank. Or is that going to be a concern? You know, if the fight starts going six rounds, seven rounds, he's going to think, God, 10 rounds is a, still a long way off. Yeah, look, I, I think the quicker you can get away from four rounds and even six round fights and get them to eight rounds and 10 rounds, 
the better, because that, that's the real distance of a fight. If you're going to be someone that's going to go on, challenge and win titles and be a championship distance fighter, so the quicker you can get up to that level, uh, the better. Um, look, it, he, I don't probably believe he's going to have to go 10 rounds. From what we've seen of him so far, he's been blowing a lot of these guys around his speed. I think guys on that lower level just can't deal with that hand speed. They become become bamboozled by it a little bit. And he's, there's obviously a bit of uh, a pop in those shots as well. So I'll be surprised if he goes 10 rounds. But the fact that he's trained for 10 rounds, in his mind he's ready to go 10 rounds, you're, you're, you're building your fighter, aren't you? You're developing, you're getting him used to that. I'm just going to... Uh... Stay on Adam Azim for a little bit longer, but I'm going to ask you about Karis Artingstall, who's caught my eye just over there. It's a huge night for her. Um, professional debut. There's high hopes for her because she's an Olympic medalist. She won uh, medals at the Europeans and the Worlds as well. And um, she had to sit back and watch her partner, Lauren Price, go through it a couple of Saturdays ago. How do you think she'll be feeling? And how much expectation is there with this crop of Olympians that are, are turning over? Because they're, they're coming with big reputations. We expect instant results, I think, as do the promoters. Yeah, well, I think there's, I think there's always been big expectations from Olympians throughout the years, generations, because generally, you know, if you're an Olympic medalist, a, you know, it, it, it's not an absolute, but it's highly likely you're going to go on and become a very good professional. So she's, uh, this is the start of her journey. She'll have soaked up the atmosphere and the nerves and the mental preparation and, and, and all that. And she'd have took a lot in, I guess, from when um, uh, Lauren boxed. She'll, she'll have been watching, what's the change rooms like? Did the TV come in? Do they bother you? What was the ring walk? Was it long? You know, she'll be, these are little things she'll be just picking up and it'll help her. It will help her uh, on her, her, her fight on Saturday night. Matt, I'll catch up with you later. I'm going to uh, grab our cameraman, Scott. Come with me. Don't be scared. There's plenty going on around here. Boxing's new power couple. Are we allowed to say that? Are you getting tired of that yet? I mean, I, I actually think it's going to cause trouble because Barry Jones on set this weekend was like, Lauren did great. So that means that the pressure's on Karis because she has to one-up her. I don't want to get involved in this dispute. I'm not, I, I don't, no. She always done one better than me in the amateurs. She always got gold, I always got bronze. So there's no pressure on me. I don't need to perform as good as she did. It's the same as the amateurs. <laughs> I, I've heard a great story, which I don't know if you've told on camera yet. I think you told it to our colleagues at Boxer, which was about the lockdown sparring. Obviously, everybody was shut down. I think that GB coached you guys over Zoom. Uh, you, you did the best that you could do. But you actually ended up having bespoke sparring sessions in the front room. That just sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. The weight difference and stuff like that. How out of hand did that get? Who got the best of it? Dare I ask? I don't want any trouble. To be Lauren was waiting to come in there first, but I'm going to come to Carrie's first. To be fair, it was like in a phone box. We literally pushed the sofas aside and had no head guards because my head guard was brand new and I was like, I can't wear that because it's uncomfortable. Just stuck a gum shield in and then we just had eight, eight freeze. Just went at it. Sort just of casually just having eight freeze in the front room. 30 seconds rest in between. But we was coming out with, I was coming out a bit more battered and bruised than she was. I was coming out with like cut lips, bruised ears, little black eyes and that, but... I bet GB were over the moon, weren't they? They didn't really know, to be fair, because they weren't on the co like they weren't on the Zoom whilst we was doing that. They were just zooming as well because we was on the bags. But yeah, it needed to be done, to be fair, though, because it was before the qualifiers. And if we didn't do that, we probably wouldn't have been as, in a good place as what we was. That was the secret. Let me come to you, Lauren. There was a bit of a dispute about who had the best of it by going first. So you made your debut two weeks ago. Poor Lauren had to sit at ringside. Poor Lauren and Karis. Poor Karis had to sit at ringside and go through it. I mean, God bless you. Um, now you have to go through that. So actually the power swung back to her. Having been through it, what is the one piece of advice you would give Karis? Karis. I just think um, relax and enjoy it. And, you know, all the hard work's done. I know she's trained 100%. She's absolutely flying. Watch her on the pads this week. Best I've ever seen her. And um, yeah, even even like the ring walk, take it all in, enjoy it, enjoy the experience. And I'm sure after you know the bell goes, she'll settle down. As soon as she throws a jab or whatever, faint, she she'll be in her rhythm, and I'm sure she'll be shining. What was the one thing that you took from it though that stood out as the big difference? You said people keep coming in with the dressing dressing room in the camera. You know, the door opens, there's a camera in your face. Something you're going to have to get used to, I think. But um, aside from that, what was the one thing that you would pass on? Um, I just think, obviously, first time without not winning head guard, little gloves and that, but you automatically, I think, obviously, you, it's, it's there to, you know, have, have your hands up and have an head guard, and if she haven't got her hands up, I'll be shouting at her anyway, ring size to firm up, so, um, but no, I'm sure there's going to be fireworks, and I can't wait, like, to, 
to, to watch it and I'm really looking forward to having a cookie on Sunday. So I've been waiting for two weeks. Yeah, so I've already been told that the desserts have been have been purchased. Oh, they're, ordered, so they're, yeah, they're not they're not sitting in the hotel room then you can smell them surely. I mean that's that's like torture, isn't it? They're at um, Lauren's Nan's house. They got delivered there today actually, so they'll be ready to get banged into the microwave and for us to eat when we get home. Trust me, you're talking about a man who knows one or two things about desserts. I mean we're, we're bonded here. Just finally, what do you want to get out of Saturday? That you, know, you want to get a win. But there is a huge amount of expectation on you. In terms of the fight week and things like that, what do you want to show us once that first bell rings? I just want to try and show you what I've been working on in the gym. I've been in the gym since January. Obviously, it's the same sport, but it's a different game. There's a few things I've been working on. I was very good with my feet work, footwork in the, in the amateurs. We're all making mistakes, <laughs> don't worry. In the amateurs. and I've been working on my hand defences and slipping and sliding, staying in the pocket a bit more putting the combinations together a bit more. So I'm just hoping what I've been working on all this time in the gym comes to show in, in the ring on Saturday. I'm sure it will. Listen, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, last time that I ever get Karis's name wrong on camera, the glare there, it was ice. Yeah, it was you did have a right no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't even take that. Enjoy the rest of your day. Come with me. Stay with us here. Oh, that's, that's, Don't worry that, about me. Don't worry about he, me. He was, the sentence he was saying there was, you know what it is. So what, what is it? What is the answer, Dan? You tell me. We're just talking about, you know, going over game plans and working out how Dylan Schumer gets to win, obviously. <laughs> he wasn't telling you about Malcolm Stores, was he? We, we, we were, those of you who watched Sky Sports yesterday, you would have seen that we were allowed into the Chima Castle, almost. And uh, one thing I would say, we went to your, your granddad's store, Malcolm Stores. They wouldn't let me pay for my drink afterwards. And uh, when I did, they said, no, you can't pay, you can't pay, you can't pay. So I put it back and uh, they went, OK, no, you can pay. <laughs> and, then, and then Dylan, Dylan put online that he, he charged me for a pot noodle. And it's not true. It's not true at all. I'm, I'm, I'm strictly on salads now. Yeah, yeah. That was great yesterday. I really enjoyed it. But it, what came across most, more than anything, was that it's a, the family is all involved here. Yeah, this, is, this is your journey in the ropes, but something that you haven't got to this point on your own. The whole family are rooting for you. Yeah. That's it. I, I mean, my family supported me massively. They supported me in kickboxing, now in boxing. So they're, they're backing me 100%. As you know, as we seen yesterday, mum and dad and my granny don't like going to the fights. Everyone else enjoys it, but they stay back and, and, and hold the fort up, as, as so to say. So, you know, it was a, we're a family business through and through, and, and that shows when we were selling the tickets out, out, the, out the draw, out the till. We're selling the tickets, everything out the shop. You want to buy everything, you buy the tickets as well. <laughs> yeah, I was there for like 20 minutes, and uh, I ended up with a t shirt. I ended up nearly buying some of your nan's plants. Uh, I got, Balget is your nan, isn't it? I've got to give Balget a shout out. Uh, I was scared of Malcolm more than Balget, but now I'm scared of Balget. Uh, let me ask you, there's a hell of a lot of talk about the Boxer Series and everything that came before. That all gets forgotten, though, if it goes wrong on Saturday. Stu Green is coming off a win last weekend. He's going to fancy it. It is only a four-rounder. You can't afford to start slow. What do you know about Stu Green? What are you, adjustments have you had to make from that Boxer Series? Free freeze, quick fire. It's only four freeze now, but it's a slightly different kettle of fish. Yeah, it is, you know. We, we, when we're doing pad work, we do training sessions, we're not breaking it up in between fights. We can do one continuous session. So that's what we did before. Luckily, the training camp for the Boxer Series was about seven, eight weeks. So it wasn't long enough for my body to adapt. I can change back quite quickly. You know, Stu Green is obviously a good lad. He came off a win last week. They all, call, they all say it's a journey when you should go in there and win. But when you've got a journeyman in there that's coming to take your head off as well, it's different. It's a different ball game. It's a different kettle of fish. So I've got to be on my game. I've got to be sharp. I've got to be. I am fit and I'm. I'm strong as well. So that's all going to show. But I can't afford to drop around. That's the thing about four round fights. You've got to be on your game for the duration. Just one more on commentary. I don't think Sky Sports have been here since Rendell Munro fought Victor Tarafas years and years ago. Then the boxer series came. Seems to. I know Sam Higginson's been boxing at the Sky Dome. But it seems to have just lit this fire that you're part of now. Midlands Boxing as a whole, I don't want to miss anybody out, but Midlands Boxing as a whole is going through this almost like renaissance. You're part of that. Yeah. Presumably you want to win and keep these shows, keep coming back to commentary. One million percent. <laughs> because look look, like, look at where we are today. You don't really get open workouts in venues like this. Uh, it's different. It's, you, know, you see it down in London, but otherwise you see it in shopping centres and places like that. Commentary's got a hidden gem. They found me as a hidden gem and now we've got some more nights big nights back again so we're back for this one pretty much a sold out venue saturday night so proves that we can go a bit a little bit bigger next time and, and bigger shows back in commentary
Dylan, thank you very much for talking to us. You get back to talking game plans, Dan, yeah? That's exactly what it was. I've got, hello everyone, good to see you. I'm going to bring you around this way. I'm just going to swing you around just as you come around here. So this is Anthony Lofay, the man that's uh, going to be taking on Adam Azim. Just have one quick look at him because there's only one fight available on YouTube. There's, not, there's nothing really to study, but he has been going through this pad routine. That's it. They knew the camera was on him. That, he, that, you don't want to give anything away. Come with me. Birmingham's Klitschko brothers. Tyron and Corey Gibbs. Corey, I'm going to come to you because we've just been talking to Boxer Series Willa D Dylan Chima. This Boxer Series, for both of you, Tion as well, it has been this launch pad. I mean, it's been, a, I know it's a good night for everybody, but for you, that seems to be the launch pad that you needed. Now I'm live on the Skyville, got a boxer contract. How important is it to capitalise on that? That's, that was great, you were the champion, yeah. got that check for 40 grand, now you want to capitalise. That's what it is, I've been, I've been saying, like, that's all I needed, like, is to be seen. And now I've been seen, like, this is going to be something I can settle down, there ain't going to be no free, like, no rush no more. I can settle down. They didn't really see it last time because it was a big rush, but, yeah, you're going to see a lot more of me this time. Is that a whole different change now, mentality-wise? Eight rounds. I mean, like, you can effectively, I don't want to say ease your way into it, because it yeah. still has only eight rounds, but yeah. you don't have to have that quick mentality yeah. of we've we got to win that first round. Yeah, that's what it is, and I'm a lot better when I'm relaxed as well. With, with that tournament, I was thinking I had to win the first round, so it was like, but now you're going to see I'm a lot more relaxed, Corey, so, and you'll see the better Corey as well, so all my skills, my power, you'll be able to see a lot more, and I can't wait. Tion, you got just give us your right hand. I mean, it's, it's been a bit of a nightmare. How are you healing up? Uh, you didn't say it on the night. You didn't give any excuses, but we could gauge from your body language and anything like that. Were you in there with one hand effectively? Was that something that you actually had to box with going into the tournament? That's exactly what it was. And what, what made it the whole situation worse was I drew Scott first. And he knew. Who knew? I would have been able to. I would have been able to hide it a lot more and like box. That's the thing, like he knew he, he could he could do he could do what he had to do. But I was hoping I could draw someone else and kind of just sneak sneak through it. Yeah. yeah. But um it's healing. I'm hoping like next six weeks, obviously I've been seeing my um impact impact therapy at ammo. Uh he's been helping me out, healing me up and that so I feel like six weeks and I'm hopefully back out in September. Brilliant. And you'll be there on Saturday? I will be indeed, mate, yeah. Perfect. Right, we'll catch you both then. Good to see you, good to see you. Let's go around. So he's got to us at the moment, unhelpfully. In fact, we're, we're live, aren't we? Come with us. Come with us. Let's get a, let's get a better view of Sam Eginson. The man that we're looking forward to on the undercard, Scott Forrest. In fact, let's let's go have a quick word, Scott. Great to see. One and zero. It was a good one. <laughs> we didn't get a chance to show us too much. We think that you uh, are going to be a bit of a handful in this cruiserweight division. Is that fair enough? Um, you and the team believe that as well? Oh, definitely. Like, um, it's a big division right now, especially domestically. Like, um, big names out there, but they're just names, aren't they? What did you take from your debut? Um, I was in there just to see what the difference is between amateur and pro. Obviously, I've been amateur for a long, long time. Like, I was on Team GB for five years. And then that was just to get the get the lights on me, see see what difference is. But um, nah, I took it and I thought it was really good. It was a good hunt. Bit unlucky because Nazar Ryan was known as a hard man who's been the distance with heavyweights. Yeah. He didn't look in the best of shape, and that took away from your performance. But you hit him hard enough that the result was only ever going to go one way. Yeah, that was the thing. Like he's only been stopped four times before, and um, I got told it was going to be a tough fight. He's been in with big heavyweights and everything, so it was like, right, we were kind of expecting a bit more, but I went in there, I got in the groove, and I made it my fight, and that's that's what I'm here to do. That's it. Well, best luck on Saturday, 2-0, and hopefully. Have a good one. So, I promote Shalom. You know what? We are live. You know what Ben Shalom said to me earlier in the week? He said, you're really dressing with a lot of style nowadays. Where he got that from, I do not know. You just offended everybody. Are you what are you telling lies for? How are you, first off? The sunglasses weren't needed. As soon as we put an open workout on in Coventry, the sun went away. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know what happened. As soon as I arrived, it, it was the grey clouds were out. I was ready for a, for a festival. But no, it's been a great atmosphere. It's still, still very, very good out here. Feels, feels like 
everyone's just happy to be here. Everyone's happy a big show's coming to the Midlands, and I can't wait. Adam Azim, fair to say, Boxer Breakthrough Series. He is front and centre of this. Every promoter is always going to hype up their fighter, and we're, we're guilty of getting on this Adam Azim train early. But you have got incredibly high hopes for Adam Azim. That's right. That shows in the fact that you've matched him in a 10-rounder, just his fifth fight. Yeah, I think I need to calm down because I feel, <laughs> no, I, feel, I feel sorry for him. But the thing is, it goes right over his head. He just wants to get in there and fight. He, he feels no pressure. He's born to fight. He loves to fight. He's got an obsession I've not seen in any other fight. Like, ridiculous. And uh, that gives me the confidence that he's going to go all the way. And, um, yeah, I don't think you can put pressure on this kid. And it's not easy. Guiding a fighter isn't easy because if it all came on stuck on Saturday, everyone would be saying, you're mad. Why were you rushing him over 10 rounds? <laughs> But do you have that confidence that you don't want to hold him back? There is no point. He's ready to go. Why keep him? Why, why keep a racehorse in the stalls? You know, let him go. Yeah, that's the thing. As a young promoter, and having a talent this big that we really believe will be that big, it is difficult to know what to do. And sometimes you think, are you rushing him? Are you putting too much pressure? Should he be doing this much media? But when I speak to Shane, he's saying more, more, more. Yeah. He wants levels and levels and levels. That's, that's great endorsement, though. And you have to trust that. And Barry McGuigan knows about boxer when he sees him, and he tells me that's the best he's seen. So what can I do other than keep testing him and keep putting him in those places? But as I say, at the moment, no no problem for him. One more before I let you go. Uh, Karis Artingstall, high hopes. Uh, Lauren did her bit. Pressure switches to Karis now, but she doesn't seem too worried. No, not at all. She's in ridiculous character is all I can say and proper northern personality she well, always well, I just called her the wrong name live on camera and I nearly uh, yeah. froze you know it's not that cold here but I nearly froze on an ice block she has got something about her and she's always having a go at me but she's special I think she's gonna I think she's gonna light up the division to be honest I think she's the one that's really made for the professional sport what Fraser Clark said wasn't it the GB captain she is the dark horse of that team and she's gonna do something special and uh, I think she'll be knocking people out which again you don't you see Savannah do it you don't see it much you know really often but Karis is definitely gonna be doing it there you go Ben Shalom head of Andy Scott's wardrobe <laughs> right here, 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 here. Hold on. We, just, can, we can't go from big. Look at this guy. I've just been abused for my foot. Big, welcome, my to, welcome to Miami. Oh, <laughs> Don't adjust your sets. I was just about to say, look, he looks like he's in Miami, and then I realised they would not be allowed in Miami. Nail violence on my toes. My what on earth? Uh, I don't know what I don't know what to say. Very very rarely am I lost for words, but I don't know what to say is that, to you. Is that summer lock? Is that summer lock? Is uh, you know what? This is actually pretty nice. I pulled up round the corner and I thought it feels like we're abroad. It does. It's it pretty does. cool, isn't it? it yeah, like... we, we jinxed it, didn't we? Because as soon as we started, uh, it started to rain. So well, the sun's shining in Sheffield, and then you Londoners brought the rain up here. So right now. Exactly right. I'm just going to get you to push us. Let's just have a look at Sam Eggington while I talk to Johnny Nelson. I did a thing yesterday. If you did a list of Britain's most entertaining fighters, he would be near, if not top, of most people's list. I'm so glad that Sam's on the bill, number one. Number two, he's fighting for what they call the IBO title. And, you know, it doesn't matter what you think of it. I like the fact that, you know, he's in a position to win something here. He's one of the few fighters that leaves everything in the ring. You know you're going to get excitement. You know you're going to get heart, determination, desire. And, and when I thought Sam's topping the bill, it seems like he's been around forever. Well, he has been. Yeah, you know <laughs> he has I mean? been. All... He's only 28. Let me just... We can, we can come up to you, save you... Oh, you don't have to bend down. It's fight week. Oh, you should come up to you. We joke about this all the time. There have been fight weeks in the past where I would dread this moment. You know, 147 was a lot of work for you. I know 154 isn't easy either. But you cut a very confident, very relaxed man now who knows exactly what his job is and a man who's enjoying his job as well. Is that fair enough? I think so. Um, 147, I probably wouldn't have come today. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's a cliche, so I get people don't believe me, but I am feeling better. I do feel like I enjoy it more. You know, I enjoy the training. I enjoy the, not the, the dieting to a point. You know, I enjoy the whole, the whole thing. So, yeah, I mean, like you say, again, a cliche, but I have a fight as a dangerous fight and... I generally I enjoy what I do, so so yeah. I know she didn't say media and interviews on that, but look, we can't have everything in this world. I know your job is fighting. We're just about to see your opponent. Uh, yeah, I'll be one second. Don't worry, I'm holding them up. Look, they're not very happy. Uh, Premislav Zisk, 18 and 0. But I think you and John Pegg fancy this style-wise. You think that he is not going to be someone you're going to have to go looking for. Look, like say um, if he's if he's not someone after all looking for, then. A lot of the time, it's meat and drink. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. But I thought that about the last kid, and he took me to Helen back. So 
You know, we have to John Pegg described him as a French Sam Eggington. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good endorsement. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, look, it is what it is. But um, we, we've, we've trained hard. We've done everything we can. And whether we come to to box, you know, like Mayweather or fight like Tyson, I believe I've done everything I can in the gym to, to make sure that you know, I get the win. I've got to let you go because I'm going to get knocked out by a, a Polish uh, 18 and 0 fighter in a minute. But. You're looking at bigger and better things. I don't want to do down the IBO title at all, but you said to us yesterday, this is a springboard towards better and bigger things. Fingers crossed. Um, I've said that about a lot of things, though. You know, the, the British, the Commonwealth, the European. I've always thought it's going to push me on to something big. Fingers crossed this is the one. The Savage, but Mr. Entertainment is a better nickname. Go well. Enjoy it. I've just made I've just made him crouch for like two minutes there. I feel terrible. Oh, they're about, they're about what people texting you about your shoes. Yeah, they are. They're texting you about your shoes. Like, Let me come around. No, it's the now one. Should have No, what I'm saying is, we, 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 I, I don't know what they are. I don't know what they are. We were trying to figure out Coventry, and I can't remember. So if you're watching this, did Frank Tate fight Tony Simpson in Coventry? Tony, I remember they let uh, a stink, I'm sure my age here, they let a stink mum off in the crowd. I'm, I'm trying to remember where it was. Frank Tate, Tony Simpson. Frank Tate was defending his IBF Super Middleweight title. See, Matt, no, did you know? No, I don't That's know what we're looking for, so no. I mean, uh, before the war, I, know was from, I know Tony Simpson was from Leicester. So I said, maybe, but you, you don't think it was Leicester. To the literal hundreds of fans that are watching, send in the answer if you know it. I'm going to get, I'm going to get you to spin around because we don't know anything in depth about Premise Labs Disc. We're all guilty of looking down box, right? There's a few fights on YouTube. He, I don't want to do him down at all, but Sam Higginton just said to us there, I expect him to walk forward, and if he walks forward with his hands up, that's me and drink for me. The fights that are available, he does do that. Uh, but I don't say that from a negative point of view. We're not complaining. It is the entertainment business. It looks like it's going to be an entertaining fight on paper. Well, look, uh, uh, Sam Higginton, I don't think Sam Higginton's ever had a, a spa that wasn't entertaining. You know, he, he's happy to take one to give one. And if the opponent's happy to take one to give one, then we're in for a treat, aren't we? We've been, we've made mistakes before, though. You can't write people off by going on box rec. The red flags are that... He's only boxed outside of Poland once. This is his first trip over to the UK. It'll be interesting to see how he travels. See, I always go, I, I go by what I see, not by what I read. You know, I'm going by looking at the fight himself. You get in there, he looks fight ready. Yeah, he looks like, you know, I've come here, you've underestimated him. Most Eastern Europeans are, are in your face kind of fighters. More, 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 more brute force than, than technique. I think. This will be that kind of fight where Sam Eggington is, this is his Christmas. Now, this man's going to give Sam Eggington all he wants and all he's got. So, if that is the case, what will happen is you're going to get entertainment, you're going to get, you're going to get knockdowns, but you're going, to, you're going to see who is the strongest, who wants it most out of the two. This is a walkthrough. You know, this will get. This will be an entertaining fight. Well, so I think it's a good top of the bill fight. Anyone that thought that Hassan Makinwayo the Tanzanian was a walkover. Look how badly that went wrong for Sam Eggington that night. If you go in thinking you can walk through someone, you're gonna come up. You but could that's come what unstuck. Makes Sam exciting. That's oh. what. That's why we got Sam. It's like Sam's been boxing forever. You know, I can't remember how old he. Well, what yeah, is he? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight years old. But I think he'll have learned his lesson from that fight. You know, that fight uh, when the Tanzanian in Birmingham. He was boxing. He was meant to box two weeks later on the AJ uh, on yeah, the cards. I think they were trying to make him against Brandon Rios. Yeah, that, that's right. So, you know, his focus had been shifted. He was he was looking past that opponent. I was looking to the uh, Brandon Rios fight, and he paid the price. You know, he got it's caught. In, it's, it's in his DNA. He can't help himself. I'm, I'm telling you, you, you they'll, they will give him all the instructions in the corner, and he's thinking. Pac-Man, straight on him, straight on him, won't let it go. One more before we go, because we've got to wrap up, because we're just about to have a, a, a bit of a press conference between the uh, English, make an English title fight, River, Wilson, Benton, Tyler, Denny. We'll get some clips of those guys later. We haven't got them on the live stream. Before you go, I've asked Matt about Adam Azim, but I haven't had a chance to yeah. speak to you about Adam Azim. A fan? I'm a fan. If this young man can pocket where he is now in his career and take it beyond domestic, European and world level, I'm telling you now, you are looking at the next Prince Nassim Hamid. I'm telling you, when Naz was at this stage, all the balls, all, all the bold statements were made about him, the talent that he had, and, and but the thing is what Naz had about him, he had attitude, he had a chip on his shoulder. Adam is a nice young man. He's gonna make you hate him or love him, and then you're gonna watch him. But because he's a nice guy, you know, it's, it's gonna be harder for him to capture your imagination. But if he can take this talent 
on the world scene, I am telling you now, you've seen it, he's a golden goose. You've gone big. It's not big, like you. No, it's not like you. Boom. It's down. not like, like he's gone he's gone massive. The next Prince Nassim Hamed, he said, oh, just before we go, I was just seeing if Adam Azim was around, but I think that he has gone. He is Adam Azim has left the building. Thank you for joining us today in commentary. Make sure you join us tomorrow. We'll have live coverage of the weigh-in. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day live from commentary. And I'm going to end on the best possible way to end. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> what, 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 what? Did I do wrong? What? What? No, it wouldn't be a black nail bun. Just the two English title fights, but down to